going to do my first ever, ever flip cup, but I'm just not confident enough to flip it on the canvas. And I have seen people put paint down first, flip it on the canvas, but man, I'm just concerned I'm gonna throw it everywhere. So I'm going to do it like this. I think this for me is going to be a way safer option because I'm not <laughs> I'm not greatly coordinated and I'd probably end up throwing it all over my papers. Now, what do we do next? Well, I guess we gotta let the paint out. Oh, I could put some paint around it and I've mixed up some Payne's Grey to give it a bit more depth. So let's put some of that. It's the same paint, it's the same experiment. It's all Liquitex Basics, all with the same percentage and ratio of the pouring mixture, which is one-to-one -one of Liquitex pouring medium and Floetrol. And the question we're asking is, what does the Floetrol do to the paint? I think I had too much paint in the cup. <laughs> Oh man, I can understand now why Fiona at Fiona's Creative Canvas did 30 day challenge because you don't know what the heck you're doing. And I've been painting for a really long time, but I've never actually painted like this where it's so random. So man, it's all just a little bit of a huge learning curve, but I'm really excited for the experiment because I'm just needing another creative adventure into new realms. Look at that, that's actually really fun. <laughs> I'm liking that. And it's helping the paints gray come through. So I don't know what you call it. I, I flipped the cup, so I, I suppose it's a flip cup, right? But you know, is it a dirty flip cup? Because I did have all the paints mixed in it. Oh, it's gonna be pretty nice. I'm thinking it could be, but you never know what you're going to get. I think that's why I haven't tried these techniques before, because I find it all so random. Oh man, it's going to be pretty, but... That is really pretty. Look at these colours. Oops, I don't know what happened to my paint's grey. Maybe I could run some through it. Yes, we could do that. I definitely had enough paint on this canvas. Very pretty. We're adding some Payne's Grey because uh, we don't want them the same. That would just never do. So let's add some through here. Oops, and then I did a bit of a drip there. Maybe some down there. And let's just add a little bit of depth into it here. I'm thinking. From using pouring medium before, you pretty much got a bit of a window to kind of play with it and move it around. But once it starts to really settle and take its place on the canvas, you can't kind of poke at it too much more than that. Wow, what do we think? Oh man. Got some more of those cells coming through from underneath and that's just from the flow troll. So that was the point, right? That was the plan to see what flow troll does. Pretty happy with that plan. Maybe I'll stretch it out a little bit more. I think my Payne's Grey was perhaps a little ambitious. <laughs> Maybe we'll blend that in some more. I might even put a bit more the gold in there because yeah, they did get a little bit crazy with the Payne's Grey. We'll see how that settles in. Now I am gonna have to get myself a few little bits and bobs for my experiment. I definitely need one of those little torches and I'm gonna have to buy a hairdryer. I know, I know that you're really surprised that I don't own one, but I don't. <laughs> so I'm gonna go, going to have to go shopping and get a few more bits and pieces. And I'm really keen to keep playing with this experiment. So I'm gonna let these two dry. I'll show you them when they've dried. And then we're gonna have to push on and experiment some more. There's a few more techniques I'd really like to have a play with and see what we can achieve. Now the painting's dried up rather beautiful, even better than I expected. Because to start with, I put on way too much paint for my, for my first ever flip cup. <laughs> and then moving it off the canvas, I wrecked my composition, wasn't happy with it, 
added some more paint and of course that didn't really help. I ended up pouring some of that paint off the canvas and this is what I'm left with but it's actually rather beautiful. Now I used all of the Liquitex basic paints in this particular canvas because I wanted to see what the flow troll would do. I used a 50% ratio of the pouring medium, the Liquitex pouring medium and the flow troll and I wanted to see what effect the flow troll would have on the pouring medium because I'd never used it before. I really like the way these beautiful silver cells have come through the surface here. They look rather good actually and if you catch it in the light you can see there's a lot more pattern and texture happening here than I actually expected. So I think the experiment's rather a success. I think the flow troll even on its own with all the same paint brands works really well in creating that beautiful texture. But I still think this side is a bit busy and I'm quite surprised at how matte flat, completely matte flat, the painting has dried. When I've used pouring medium on its own, it's dry super glossy, which ends up being amazing and has an incredible surface texture. But you know, this flat look, I'm not so sure about. <laughs> I'm going to have to varnish it. The flow troll must make it that flatness. And it's really fun trying these different mediums. So what am I going to do now? Am I going to leave it like this or am I going to push it further? Yes, you know. <laughs> I'm going to pull out one of my beautiful new pieces of Kozo paper. And I'm thinking putting it on this section here maybe in black and then scumbling some beautiful bronze over it would give the painting an extra dimension having another element. Then I think I might put some pouring medium on this side with a tiny weeny smidgen of a piggy's powdered pigment in it just to add some shine, a little bit of glimmer. What do you think? I think we should do it. Let's give it a go and see how that looks. Okay, so let's put on the beautiful Kozo paper first. This is from the Threads series, I'm pretty sure. I'll leave a link in the description under the video if you want to find the Kozo paper. And don't forget the discount code. It's always, there's always a bonus having a discount code. So we can put it on that side, although the threads and the lines are pretty strong, or we could use that side. What I like about this paper is the holes in it. It's pretty beautiful. I think I might take it right to the edge there, right to the top maybe, baby. Let's cut it down this way here on this side. And I'm thinking we could start somewhere near the top. So we'll cut it about there as well. Just like that. Now, that helps us. That's going over there. I'm thinking perhaps a little bit like this on a particular angle because it's a beautiful handmade glorious paper. It tears really easy. You just have to snip at the threads because they're very strong in the paper. You have to cut them as you're tearing it along just to get those threads broken. I really do like the jagged edge look of it. So that's what we're going to do. And then it's just a matter of deciding how much of the paper I really want to put on my canvas and how much I want to tear away. Well, yeah, I'm liking this plan, but maybe not that much. I don't want to cover my beautiful painting too much. Just a little bit, something like that, to give it a little bit more interest, a bit more texture. Now I'm going to use the Liquitex Matte Gel Medium to glue it on the canvas. Look at these threads. <laughs> They're fantastic. I might leave some of them long even to add some more texture. Oh, that's a good idea. Righto, righto. Let's do that. Just like that. The matte gel medium will glue it on the canvas beautifully. That's going to look great. So while my beautiful Kozo paper is drying, doesn't it look good or wrapped around the side? I'm going to put on some beautiful Piggy's powdered pigment. I'm pretty excited about this idea. <laughs> 
I've got some beautiful ballet slipper color. It's a slight color. It's got a beautiful metallic sheen and I'm going to just mix it only and completely with the liquid text pouring medium. And I'm thinking it should dry beautiful and glossy. Just a little bit of the pigment with a lot of the pouring medium. You can just see the beautiful metallic shine to it. And what I want to do is create a glossy surface here that contrasts with the beautiful textured paper on this side. I think it's going to be fabulous. Now, I know this is not a traditional flip cup kind of a painting, but I'm not a traditionalist kind of a person. So, <laughs> so, so I don't know what you expected, but we're always going to be trying something different, pushing the boundaries of creativity because I am a mixed media artist. So I'm pretty much going to grab for anything that I feel excited and inspired by. Let's put it on this side and make the painting shine. How about we start by just pouring some on there and then I'm figuring I will just brush it to the sides and to the edge of my paper and then let it self level and voila <laughs> I only put a very small amount of the pigment in with the pouring medium so I'm not sure how much of a shine it will have but I know it will have some kind of shine and the beautiful ballet slipper metallic pigment is going to look just beautiful right so I'll let it self level and sit there drying and then I'll show you when it's dry and I'm still wanting to scumble a little bit of the beautiful iridescent bronze on here it's going to finish it nicely the painting has dried up just beautiful and I've scumbled some of the iridescent bronze fine onto the black beautiful Kozo paper now scumbling is a technique using a dry brush and basically just lightly scraping over the surface of the texture to enhance it to create the beautiful pattern that's there already made by the paper itself it's beautiful it's got the glorious bronze color and have a look at how fabulous this section came up with the Liquitex pouring medium and the beautiful Piggy's pigment. You can't really see a huge amount of color and that's exactly what I wanted. I just wanted a little bit of metallic shine on the surface of the painting to make it super glossy this side and beautifully textured on this side. I love the contrast of the two and I think it's been a very successful experiment. The shape of the composition looks fabulous with the paint coming down there, the glorious silver cells there and the fabulous texture of the Kozo paper. <laughs> Very happy with it. And I can't wait to get stuck into the next experiment. So make sure you join me and I'll see you again next time in the studio.